Hey, what's up? Adrian here with bestformyfeed.com. I want to welcome you to this video in which we're gonna cut in half my Avenger A7505 Composite Toe Wedge Sole Work Boots. Uh, this is not a review. I'm gonna leave you a link in the description to the video review and to the article review if you want to check those out. Uh, this is more an extension of that review so we can learn more about what's going on inside these boots, how they build materials and all that good stuff. So let's get right into it. Alright, so let's see what's going on inside. The first thing I want to mention is the waterproof membrane. Yes, these boots have a waterproof membrane and according to the test I did when I, when I uh, did the review, the boots are waterproof as long as the water is below the Goria panels. Uh, as soon as you step into something that's deeper than that, you're gonna have wet socks. But here's what happens with most of my waterproof work boots, at least the ones that have a waterproof membrane. You see this hole here? This hole here in the waterproof membrane is caused by my pinky toe rubbing against the waterproof membrane. And after a few months, eight months, uh, nine months, in my case, uh, in this particular case, the waterproof membrane got punctured. And I see many of you guys uh, talking about this on Reddit, uh, that's any boots that we talk about there. You say that after four, five, six months, they started to leak. This is probably the reason why. And you can see the same thing here at the back of the heel where the, uh, the waterproof membrane just got destroyed. If I would attempt to do the waterproof test again now, uh, the boots will leak 100% because as you can see, the waterproof uh, just, it's, it's damaged beyond repair. Luckily for me, these were my summer work boots and we didn't have that much rain and that helped a lot to keep my feet uh, dry. This is where the manufacturer actually could put a heel counter in these boots in order to protect the waterproof membrane. But it's kind of difficult because they have to stitch through the waterproof membrane in order to attach the heel counter. But actually those stitches might be a weakness. Uh, maybe they can actually use glue in order to stick a heel counter in there. I don't know, I'm not a boot manufacturer, but this is just something that they could improve on in order to expand the lifespan of the boots, make them therefore more durable. Every time I post a picture on Reddit and other places with a work boot that comes with a toe cap bumper or toe cap reinforcement like this one, there's always the question whether the leather goes all the way through, like underneath the toe cap, or the leather stops where the bumper begins. And as you can see in this case, the leather stops where the bumper begins. Some people say this is bad. Personally, I never had any issues with this whatsoever. Not with this boot, with any other boot that comes with a bumper and there's no leather underneath. Um, there is the case where maybe when the bumper, you maybe you cut the bumper because you know if even if it's made out of TPU and it's harder than the leather, you can still cut through it and that will expose your uh, steel toe cap or your composite toe cap in this case and even allow water go into your boots, especially if they don't have a waterproof membrane. In my opinion, this doesn't have nothing to do with cutting corners when they're making the boots or anything like that. I don't think it's that much more expensive anyway, uh, but I think it has to do with the aesthetics of the boot because if you have another layer of leather underneath that toe cap bumper, it's going to make the boots look even bulkier than already are. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what do you think. These boots come with a composite toe cap and uh, this is much thicker than steel toe caps. I don't know if you've seen any steel toe cap uh, cut in half before, but are much thicker. That's why the boots are also uh, bulkier than steel toe cap boots. 
This is how much space you have inside the toe cap. And this is the thickness of it. By the way, uh, if you want to know more uh, parts of the boot I have measured, maybe I'm not gonna show everything in this video, make sure to check out the article. I'll leave you a link in the description. It's a little bit more in depth than the video. This is the heel counter of the boot that actually sits behind the waterproof membrane and it's uh, some kind of plasticky material, I think it's reinforced cupboard or something like that. Nothing to add here, I've seen this in many uh, war boots in this uh, price range. Next we have this sock liner, this is a fiberboard sock liner that's sitting on top of the midsole, it's actually glued to the midsole as you can see. Again, nothing important to mention here. You'll see this uh, component in every work boot. Sometimes the materials are different, but it's uh, nevertheless a, a component of every work boot. All right, let's quickly check out the upper on these work boots as well. This is a uh, full grain leather upper. This is brown. I haven't seen any other colors on this particular model. Uh, it's 2.4, 2.5 millimeters thick, which is what I've seen in most war boots I have in this price range or even uh, more expensive than this uh, and I quite like the leather to be honest it's uh, it seems like it's good quality I've oiled the leather a few times uh, even I used uh, olive oil I wanted to do a test on on the leather to see uh, if it breaks or not uh, or if it damaged the leather or not I didn't finish that test so I'll probably have to do the test on other boot but um, basically the leather, it's, it looks like it's good quality. We have some Gore elastic panels on each side of the boot. Uh, they're elastic enough to uh, allow you to put your boots on and take your boots off easily, but also they're heavy duty. They do come with a shank, even though you don't necessarily need a shank in a wedge sole work boot. The shank is much more helpful when you have a heel boot because it makes that bridge between the heel and the, the front of uh, the foot. But nevertheless, if you hit the shovel all day long or if you walk on rebar or if you're standing on hard objects that are sitting right under your arches, this is helpful. It's going to provide some uh, protection there, some stability as well. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention uh, is that I've seen some advertisers saying that the shank is fiberglass, but it looks to me that it's TPU or nylon or some plasticky uh, material. That is not gonna make any difference to you if uh, let's say you work in a airport or somewhere where you have uh, to go through metal detectors, whether it's fiberglass or TPU or plastic is not gonna set off those uh, metal detectors. But I wanted to make this um, you know, distinction here. As I said, I've seen some uh, descriptions, some product descriptions saying that it's fiberglass, but it doesn't look like to me. Here's another interesting thing I saw in the product description. It says that this boot comes with a flex well construction. I've seen some Goodyear flex well construction in shoes, but not in work boots. So it has the word uh, weld in the description. It seems like the boot comes with a Goodyear weld. But as I'm taking apart the upper and the midsole from the sole and everything, it seems like the the Goodyear weld, or what it seems to be a Goodyear weld, is just an extension of the midsole, which is uh, a polyurethane uh, midsole, and this is not a Goodyear weld at all. The leather actually was glued under the um, fiberboard sock liner, and basically this, uh, it's a fake Goodyear weld. Now, I'm not gonna make this a big uh, issue like other people are saying out there, I would never resole a 150 bucks or I think it's cheaper than that uh, work boot simply because the resoling of the boot might cost me exactly that. So I'd rather just buy new work boots. But I do think that uh, the marketing should not, uh, you know, be tricky or trying to make people think that this is a good year well boot. Uh, it's just not a good practice. That's it from me. I hope this video was helpful to you in any way. Let me know if you have any additional questions, any suggestions, any things that I might got wrong in the video. I'm Adrian from bestformyfit.com. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.